Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be going through all the new beauty launches that have come out. I feel like it's been a while and also my feed has been clogged by just like promotions for Black Friday. So I don't even know what's out. I'm excited to go through it though. I think it's going to be a decently good amount. We'll see. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But first a few things. One, I just want to say thank you so much for all the kind wishes in my last video about my back. I am feeling surprisingly, honestly, so much much better I am able to walk normally again it's still like sore and all that but it's not like tweaked like it was where it was you know every step was like fingers crossed hoping I don't make things worse type of thing so just I want to say thank you but I am just beyond grateful to be back in a place where at least I am like way more mobile and just way more back to normal. So um, that's all good. That is great. I'm so thankful. I hope you guys have been having a good holiday weekend, but you know what it means. We're getting so close to like Christmas holiday season. Christmas is my favorite time of year. I'm so excited. I have plans for my background. I'm going to be doing Vlogmas, of course. I just love the holidays so, so much. So I'm really excited for that. And I just feel like I wanted to to give you guys a little bit of a recommendation because I'm someone that likes Christmas music and I know that's controversial. Some people out there are just like, they really hate it. And I worked retail, so like I also know that that can be a lot, but I just would sing it out, okay? Me working <laughs> at my old retail job, and I worked retail for like six years straight, like I was a store manager. I would just sing it out. I'm just belting it. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. It was like the one thing that I was like, you know what? <laughs> I have to be here, and uh, I have to listen to this CD on loop every two hours. I'm gonna sing the song. But I thought I would give you a little suggestion if you want to get into the holiday spirit. One of my all-time favorite Christmas albums is Justin Bieber's, uh, I think it's Under the Mistletoe. Isn't that the... I love it so much I don't know the name. Oh, Sam's at the gym and I definitely just made him listen to that on our Spotify account. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's called Under the Mistletoe. Anyway, Under the Mistletoe, that's fine and dandy, whatever. But my favorite, I would say my favorite modern, because I got a lot of favorite Christmas songs, but my favorite modern Christmas song would definitely be Fa La La. Okay, if you haven't heard that, uh, it's Justin Bieber, it's Boys to Men. I know I'm gonna regret that if I keep this part in, but I just have to say, please go listen to it. Listen to it on Spotify. I'm pretty sure there's a music video. Such a good Christmas song, you guys. If you want something that's not traditional, very good, gets you in the spirit, highly suggest. And I just wanted to give it a shout out because I'm ready. We're putting the ornaments on the Christmas tree today. Now that my back is feeling better and I'm just like all about it. I'm all about it. So anyway, okay, let's get into new beauty launches <laughs> um, now that we've had that interruption. Also, I tried to do a different hairstyle today because it's starting to grow out and also I'm like losing all my pink. It's a whole thing. Okay, let me scoot over. Let's see what's new. I'm actually really excited to just see what's out there. <laughs> it's probably gonna be all about Black Friday sales. All right, first thing I'm seeing that's not like a sale. This is from Violet Voss and it's called the Rust Palette. I rust you. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, there was a pun in one of the last videos. It was like, I kid you not, I think it was. Or could you, I thought it was, I kid you not, but you guys were telling me it's, or could you not, because it's orchid not. Or could you not? I don't know. From ColourPop. And like I feel like that one's just like, for me, obviously way too complex. <laughs> I do not understand what's going on. Um, obviously, everyone corrected me there and I was just like, why do I not know things? But I rust you. I'm not missing anything, right? It's like, I love you. I rust you. It's like Scooby-Doo's in the house. I rust you, Raggy, you know? Anyway, $45. I'm wearing a similar color. You know, I could get this look with that palette probably. So I'm not saying that it's not something that could create beautiful looks. I'm just not definitely inspired by it. And you know, we're going back to like a bigger formatting for Violet Voss in this palette. I think there's another mini one that came out as well. That one's called the Mini Sunflower. Definitely way more into the Mini Sunflower, but still, they're both just not there. It's kind of like what I was talking about in one of my past videos talking about collecting makeup. It's just hard for me to get into the Violet Voss. There's always just like something missing, something missing. And I feel like both of these are missing just something, you know? the. 
Uh, mini sunflower though definitely has more potential to me. I do like the idea of these like golden yellows, maybe with some like rosy colors and getting into some really rich browns. I think that would be a really beautiful color story, but there's just something about this one that doesn't quite do it. Although I'm learning sometimes I have a disconnect of like a palette that looks good, like visually is inspiring and exciting. But then when you get down to like, let's make a look, it's like, oh, well, that's different. And then there are palettes that look kind of boring look kind of like, okay, uninspiring, boring, whatever. But then those are the palettes that actually can create these looks that I'm like stunning, beautiful, wow, take photos of me. And so I'm learning that that exists, right? And then now it's like, oh, I wanna find the palettes that inspire me, but also, yeah, I do wanna like wear and not be like totally confused or like, mm, but what do I create with it? Even if it's pretty, does that make sense? Anyway, they don't quite hit it, but the mini sunflower is getting closer, especially than the I rust you. Like I rest you. It's just I love you, right? Like it's just I love you. I don't I don't get it. There's some new palettes from She Glam. I feel like She Glam's coming hard. They're really trying to like make it into the beauty world, you know, like come out of, and I believe it's a Shein like off brand, but for makeup specifically. And these are um, these horoscope palettes. So there's one for each month. And there's something about these. Well, when I first saw them, they kind of look like Odin's Eye-esque to me. Like those are the vibes I was getting. And then inside they are eight pan palettes. I love how small they are. They're like semi-monochromatic. Some of them, some of them aren't as much, but I thought these were kind of cute. The swatches look okay. I'm just surprised. It feels like I've been seeing a lot of releases from She Glam that I think are like pretty good. And then really that price, these are $6 a piece. You know, it's interesting. I, I'm, I'm not ready to buy. I don't know if I will, but I just think it's interesting. I keep seeing it pop up. You know what I mean? It has me just wondering and I have my eye on it to see where it goes because I do think that they're putting in a decent effort. That price point is pretty good. It'll be interesting to see what they come out with next. I would love to know, have any of you tried She Glam? How is the quality to you? I'm just curious if any of you out there have since I haven't. I feel like another thing, I'm just very chatty. I'm gonna be chatty as hell in this <laughs> video. So um, that's cause I didn't get a video out Friday cause my back was still a little effed. It was still a little effed Friday, but Saturday's feeling good, you know? Something I've been trying to do a little bit more, I would say in the last, I don't know, six months. And also like, as I feel like I've had a little bit more money to do so, if I'm being honest, I do wanna try different formulas. I feel like it's very easy to write palettes off. I talked about this with that Huda Beauty palette, the new one that came out, the Rose Quartz. It's easy to write things off. And although I don't wanna buy everything still, the way things are marketed, promoted, and photographed sometimes can be very different, good or bad, to what they actually are. And so I've been allowing myself a little bit more to try some things. Again, I don't know if I'm gonna try this, but that kind of experience that I'm having does make me just wonder a little bit more like, hmm, I wonder if these are actually good or not because they definitely are trying to fill the part of like looking like a, a nice thing. So I just wonder, you know? Anyway, okay, moving on, there is, oh, the, oh, the Marilyn Monroe collection is available now. I did think some of the quads looked pretty. I wish we could get some good swatches. Another one, if you've tried it, let me know if it's good. This was something that I almost bought from ColourPop. I really do like the Super Shock shadows, and these are the two that come out. I think they do it like every single year. They're saying their sixth annual collab, and this is with, um, I think it's with like an animal, Best Friends Animal Society. So one is like a dog one, one's a cat theme and so they're just so pretty. I love the colors that they came out with. I feel like they're very wearable. I don't need them though. That's what stopped me. Like I'm sure these are really beautiful. I'm sure if I had a smaller collection, you know, all those things. I just don't need them. I have so many beautiful single shadows. One of the ones that I use today and I'm like, oh, so pretty. This one from Touch and Soul. It's kind of similar actually to the one in the, the picture that I'm talking about, but I'm feeling good like trying all the different makeup. I was thinking about it and I thought it'd be fun to do like an archival project going into the next year where I'm trying to do a couple of looks and do like a video with each of my palettes that I have just to have them, you know, like just eat whether I get rid of them in the future, or I keep them longer or whatever. I thought that would just be interesting but I also know that's like an insanely huge task to take on on top of unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> um, usually tutorials and stuff like specifically don't do super well. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel about all that. Anyway, I'm just literally talking about shit with you that I have not thought out all the way. Oh, lots of vault stuff was coming out for ColourPop, not interested. Oh, these from Viseart. This is something that's new. I love the packaging on this. This is the Viseart Petite Pro Paris 
a toit. I don't know. I feel like something in there is definitely silent. It's really pretty. It's quite cool toned. Um, you know, it's giving me, I don't know. I, I think of like midnight velvet and I like it. I think it's pretty. This is the thing. I buy into the fantasy of this, right? Like I love the idea of this super dark velvety look, but the reality is like this tends to be at least at the moment, kind of as dark as I go. I don't know how much I'd actually use it. The models look stunning. I think that they, the looks look great. The swatches look beautiful and I love the fantasy, but I feel like obviously I have these colors and I'm like, how often will I use that fantasy? But mm, I do think it's pretty. And I still need to try Viseart. I know that that sounds so funny, but I really have never tried anything Viseart yet. I really would love to. That's something probably going in. I should do a list of like brands I wanna try in 2022. Oh my God, I almost said 2023. And then I was like, I can't, how did I lose another year? 2020 is gone and where's 2022? But. That's next year, okay. I need to get it together. Some new stuff from ColourPop. I haven't seen these yet. These are Ulta exclusive ones. And one is Ticket to Dreamland and On a Whimsy. They're very like carnival pastel looking. I really like the outer packaging. I like love the idea of that. I would love to like have a themed party like that. And this is the thing sometimes where I wanna separate myself from the fantasy of packaging. Cause you know, buying this palette's not gonna take me to On a Whimsy party, which is what I really want, right? What I really wanna do is go to a pastel themed circus that's kind of like fun and fancy free. The popcorn has like, you know, white chocolate drizzled in like baby blue on it with maybe some edible sparkle. Love that. Maybe you walk over here and it's like a gold encrusted, I don't know, merry-go-round or something that you get to go on. And it's just a, a good fun old time. Maybe you can go get cotton candy somewhere. Like that sounds fun. Buying this palette won't get me that even if the inspiration <laughs> is that the colors on this seem fine. I think they go with the theming. You know, with ColourPop, they just like, they throw their net wide and they just are like, we'll take some of you, we'll take some of you. And if not, we'll get you on the next release tomorrow. <laughs> and this one's not gonna get me. Although I do think Ticket to Dreamland, the top one in this photo is definitely the one that I like more. This to me is a, an example of a palette that I would also wanna dupe out, which hopefully soon I can get to the duping palettes again. I feel like I haven't done that in forever since I moved. My plans for, singles week got completely foiled but hopefully obviously during vlogmas we'll have some videos like that so they're they're coming i know i miss them but this is a palette that i could see myself maybe recreating to like see how i'd like it and like oh get inspired by this exact combination of shadows. Anyway, next we're getting like a more full reveal of this Too Faced palette. I'm pretty sure this was teased a long time ago. This is the Too Femme palette and it has like a butterfly theme to it. This is just definitely not my style. I'm not really excited for this palette personally. I know I won't be picking it up. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with it. I just, the baby blue with the hot pink, like it's an okay thing. It's just not for me. And in these photos, something that would maybe get me is something textural, but I don't see that coming out, at least not in the photos. The blush isn't something I'm interested in. Like it's not my type of pink. Yeah, it's just the whole thing really doesn't get me personally. So I'm not excited for that one. I am interested in the perfume though. I'm not gonna lie, that's coming out. I don't know when exactly that's gonna launch, but I think it's hilarious because <laughs> I talked when it when it first kind of sneak peeked or you know they said they were gonna launch it I was like who cares but now I'm like super into perfume so I might try that out I'm not sure if the notes are exactly me but I'm sure you guys are curious too so I might pick that up whenever that launches whenever that is <laughs> this was something that like in the frenzy of Black Friday which at this point I've done all my Black Friday shopping I am done I'm done I don't care what comes across I'm not getting anything else I'm really excited for the things that I purchased and I like that I ran the gamut this year of like makeup, but also I did get some clothing. I did get some underwear. I did get some, you know, I got those puzzles. I got a few different things. So it's not just, you know, makeup like I've done in years past. And it felt right. I, I don't know. I'm really excited for it. I'll do a haul once I get it of probably mostly the makeup portion of it, but I'm excited for the stuff, but also at the same time, like I know that it's, it's done, okay? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's done, we don't need any more. This ColourPop palette though was something that tempted me. I don't know why, it's one of the big palettes, you guys know I'm not usually like into that. I think that just these kind of pinky tones have been something I've been interested in. I wonder if this is somehow a response to the retro palette from Natasha Denona. I mean, they're not exact by any means, but I wonder if this was always the plan or if that somehow had an effect on this release. Oh my gosh, I wanted to check my lips, still looking good, okay. Anyway, I didn't end up getting this even though I think ColourPop's doing a million sales, whatever. And it's interesting because like, I love the Natasha Denona formula and I also love that you can move the pans around, but ColourPop's so affordable and you can move all the pans around too, so it's like, I could make that same justification um, with the ColourPop stuff. And I think that would be like fun, it's more accessible, all this stuff is great about it, but I don't know, it, it didn't get me, I didn't end up going through with it. I have a lot of pink tones, but these are definitely the types of colors I have been into lately. It's been hard like not to use these types of colors. I've really been enjoying them. So seeing that launch was tempting and I totally get why people would like it, but I, I held off. The Encanto collection from Alomar Cosmetics is so beautiful. I really loved this launch. I don't think I'm gonna pick anything up, but that was like a, a definite choice because it would have been easy to pick it up. But I think that this whole collection is just like a really nice fit. I love that, like I just like it. I really like it. So it has three different like blush highlighter type things. It has a palette in it. I think that Alomar does texture really well. This one's definitely giving texture. Like maybe at some point if I see this, I would pick it up. Like, like it's that pretty. It really is a beautiful palette. I think that they do interesting color stories that are well thought out um, and are still wearable, but also, yeah, have a uniqueness about them. And I feel like I see that in this you know, palette, but also I feel like it goes with the theming. So I just think it was a well done collection. I also enjoyed that it wasn't huge. Personally, I could do without the brushes and the mirror. I feel like that's like this new thing, but you know, I still like that it wasn't massive and massive. It was kind of condensed and small if you really wanted to get everything you you could type of thing. And uh, I liked it. I liked seeing this launch and it was definitely one that I considered purchasing from. <laughs> Another collection I considered purchasing from. This one almost got me from ColourPop too. I don't know what it is. I, I'm talking about three now, three palettes that almost got me from ColourPop or launches. I didn't, I, every time I, I say no. <laughs> this is the Rudolph um, collection and I don't know what it was. I, well, actually I'll tell you why I was, okay, let me tell you why. So the palette is this red and green, but still like kind of muted and neutral thing. And my reasoning when I was like considering getting this, like I literally went over to the website. I, I was gonna get it, but I stopped myself. I liked this idea that this could be like a Christmas palette, a holiday palette, but it still was very neutral. It still could be wearable throughout the year. You guys know, and I've talked about literally at the beginning of this video, the holidays are my favorite. I love them so much. And so I'm like, oh, it'd be so cute to have a palette. Like, I don't know. I was just getting sucked into the marketing, like all of it. And I think the swatches look good. Like it looks nice. Like it looks like a nice wearable, holiday palette for sure, but I decided against it because I just didn't need it. It's $24. I think that was the reason I stopped myself overall because that's not like super cheap, right? $24 for an eyeshadow palette. It's not like, again, like we're talking about Natasha Denona, it's not $65, but I feel like ColourPop palettes used to be like 12. <laughs> It used to be $12 for a palette, so, you know, 12 bucks, okay, but this is double that. It's a little bit harder for just like a whimsy purchase to have to use during the holidays and feel festive, you know what I mean? So I decided not to get it, but I did think it was cute. I really did think it was cute. And then I looked for like little uh, super shocks, to, but they didn't have any in the collection. I was like, maybe I'll just get a super shock, but they didn't do that. So uh, I stopped myself, but another tempting release from ColourPop, they're coming for my, my money, my wallet. It looks like there's a new collab for Morphe brushes and Pony's makeup. Kind of similar to the last one. It's a little bit maybe deeper. The other one I think she did was more pastel and I thought it was a really pretty palette. It's the big Morphe kind of structure of a palette, which is not for me. So I won't be picking this up, but I do feel like it's pretty pony, you know, like it is her style. So um, yeah, there's that, but I wouldn't pick that one up personally. There's some new nail polishes from Harry Styles. It's a beauty line called Pleasing. I don't paint my nails for shit, okay? It is just not something I decide to give my energy to. 
Um, and I'm not gonna start with Harry Styles, so I won't be picking that up. I thought the packaging was interesting though. I'd love to see them in person. I think that's what I need. Like I wanna see the weight, is the quality there? Because if the quality is there where you're feeling it and it's heavy, then I get the packaging, but if it felt cheap, then I wouldn't like it. And I think they're kind of expensive at like $20 a piece, definitely like a more luxury price point. So they better have some weight to them is what I'm thinking. This is something that I'm definitely interested in trying, but I think they're only available in the UK right now, but Makeup Revolution is actually coming out with fragrance. One is Revolutionary, which is a sweet vanilla and patchouli. I like vanilla, patchouli, so I'm not sure about that one. There's Timeless, which is a feminine floral fruity scent with soft spicy notes. Passion, an addictive woody and spicy scent with amber and chocolate notes. That one sounds maybe interesting. And then Revolutionary Noir, a seductively sophisticated fragrance with coffee and vanilla notes. Another one, okay, I might try. But I had a lot of people want me to try these. So at some point, if I can get my hands on them, I'll check again. I will try to do a review of those on Sundays when I do my scent videos. So um, that was something I was like potentially interested in. This is a palette that I thought was also interesting from ColourPop, what the hell? This is the Roaring Hearts collection. There's something about this, like really it's the packaging, let's get real, that I was sucked into. I like the colors, there just wasn't enough texture. Maybe the actuality of these palettes or this palette does have the texture, but I don't know, They're, it's just neutral and beautiful. There was something about this. Again, I had to stop myself. It's giving me like great Gatsby vibes and I really like that. What the heck is going on? with the ColourPop stuff, seriously. I honestly feel like if the swatches and the photographs, or even if the palette itself had more texture, I would have bought that one. I would have bought it, but I ended up not. There is a palette I wanted to talk about, and it is from Tarte. Tarte, I know, has a palette that I have not talked about, and I want to, because I was, when I saw this, I was like, are you kidding me? What year is it? <laughs> What's happening? We're going backward in time. This is the new full bloom, super sized full bloom Amazonian clay palette. I am into these colors. I am, you know, feeling out my neutral self more than ever. And um, you would think that maybe this would be it for me. No, this is something I still am not there. I'm still not here for this. What the f Freak. It's just interesting that this is what they thought would be the thing and you know what at the end of the day It's probably gonna sell a lot. There's probably gonna be tons of people who buy it who love it I had the tartlet palettes when they first came out I bought that first tartlet palette I think on like pre-launch when it first launched that first tartlet palette man that cool tone mauve thing That was like almost all mattes um or was it all mattes? Yeah, that palette. Anyway, I'm not saying the formula is bad. I'm just like, it just was weird. It was like this weird flashback moment of just like, is that what we're doing? <laughs> is that what we're doing? I, I don't know. It's what Tarte's doing for sure. I'd love to know, did you pick this up and what are your thoughts? Like, do you like this if you're someone who loves neutrals? Were you excited about it? Did you like the expansion? It's just so gosh darn big. And it does feel like just looking at it, there's a ton of repeat. I'm really sorry if you can hear pipes and, and running even because... <laughs> If there's neighbors, I'm pretty sure they have people over for the holidays. And I'm pretty sure they at least have one, if not two kids. Oh my gosh. I can hear them just running around. And I <laughs> I picture them as like the exorcist running up there to make me laugh. Because if not, I will become enraged. Anyway, um, <laughs> there's that. But the Tartlet palette, I, I don't know. I'm not feeling it. I thought it was an interesting thing. Never would have guessed that was what was going to be coming out from them. But it is what they did. It is what they did. Another thing I wanted to make sure I hit on, this is the Ugly palette from Likely Makeup. And this is a really bright palette. I thought this was fun, very on brand, and it's very, very colorful. It has mostly mattes with a few uh, shimmers in it. And I thought this was fun. It's for the brand's first like eyeshadow palette, I'm pretty sure I like it. And you know, they really just went all the way in on like, colorful, like confetti almost, like just every color, put it in here. And so for that, I can like it, but it does have, you know, that blue, that yellow, that orange, that red, like very primary type of colors and like primary exact colors of that color. Does that make sense? So it's not like a really beautiful turquoise blue with like a mustard yellow. It's like, no, it's a crayon yellow, a crayon blue, a crayon red type of thing going on with some other colors in there, which is what's saving it to me. But um, I thought it was a fun little palette. I'm not gonna pick it up, but I did like it. And I'm excited to see what else, you know, the brand comes out with because we had the blush palettes for a while. Um, and you know, it's nice to see something new. 
Although I can appreciate that the brand's like releasing stuff at its pace that it wants and I love that as well. Okay, so this is a palette from the brand Mira Beauty Co and it's the Melancholia palette and it has a lot of blues in it. There's like an orange as well. It's an interesting color story. I think it's an interesting outer packaging. It's kind of like under the sea themed. I thought it was interesting. I don't know. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on it. I feel like indie brands always do something color story wise a little bit different. It's kind of like in perfume, like mainstream brands or like designer brands do something that's more mass appealing. And I feel like that's how the makeup is with like Tarte and Too Faced and all that. And then you have the indie or niche fragrances that are doing something more interesting or unique. And that's also indie brands in makeup as well. There are these single shadows from Touch of Glam Beauty. It's called the Twisted Pastels. These are really beautiful. I just saw the swatches initially and that's what like had me excited. I thought those looked really nice. And I like this idea of like pastels, but not quite. I mean, they're all shimmer. So those are like really beautiful. I don't think I've ever tried anything touch of glam. Yeah, Glaminatrix. So I haven't tried anything touch of glam. Glaminatrix stuff is coming to me. I still haven't tried it, but that might be another brand, maybe 2022. <laughs> Yeah, 2022. Ooh, this was another really beautiful uh, holiday palette that I also considered getting. I was like, maybe I'll just get all the holiday palettes. Like I already got the Glaminatrix one that's coming out, Silent Night. And this is the Dandelions Co. The Snow Spell palette. And it's beautiful. I love the blues, the greens, the reds. Oh, it's just selling the fantasy to me. I thought the swatches looked beautiful and I've never tried anything from this brand either. I've been wanting to for a little bit now, but I just haven't quite done it. I'd love to know any of your thoughts on Dandelions Co shadows they do single shadows and I really just I really enjoyed this palette I'd love to know your guys's thought especially if you picked it up I thought they did a good job too I see just so many beautiful two shadow looks because it seems like there's almost like a matte to go with every single shimmer in here and you could do like an easy monochromatic look that way but on top of that obviously you could like switch things around and undo a lot of other stuff but that's kind of what I was thinking so I thought this was a stunning palette they're also available as singles too so I'm gonna leave it there I'm gonna leave it with that one I genuinely thought thought there would be a bit more makeup to talk about, but I think it's just that Black Friday's taken over everything. That's all anyone cares about. Oh my gosh, I look like a bat. <laughs> I'm wearing my like uh, art teacher off duty or also at work outfit today. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed literally just chilling and chatting. Another very chatty, very chill video. So let me know if you like this. I feel like it's a little bit more relaxed than maybe some of my other new beauty launches. I'd love to know if you like this or not because um, it's kind of nice just to, to chat a little bit more. But anyway, I'd love to know what maybe you picked up during Black Friday if you picked up anything or if any of these new launches speak to you. Also, more than anything, honestly, the number one thing I want to know <laughs> What's your favorite Christmas song? And I'll listen to it tonight while I'm decorating my tree. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in tomorrow's video because it's Sunday. So we'll have a sent Sunday video. I'm very excited. I'm going to film it right now. But I'm excited to share what that video is with you guys because it's going to be fun. And I'm finally trying a brand that I really wanted to for so long. So um, anyway, okay, goodbye. See you tomorrow. <laughs>